When people think of analog photography nowadays, they often think of it as being expensive, since you pay 5 euros or even more for just one roll of film, and that's not even worth the development. Secondly, they often think it's difficult. In times where you can take a picture at the blink of an eye, see it immediately, and all of that even with the devices most of us carry in their pockets on a daily basis. So why should someone even bother shooting analog since it apparently has so many downsides? In this video I'll show you that it can be quite a fun experience, and how you can easily develop your own black and white film at home, with simple household items. So let's get started. First of all, obviously, you need a camera. Like this one. It's an old Zenit. I got it from my dad. The lens on here, like with most of the Zenits from the 80s, is a Helios 44M. It's a 58mm f2 lens. You might know this lens since it gained back some popularity recently because of its characteristic bokeh. I also have this 28mm f2.8 lens, which I'm going to use along with the Helios on this camera. Next, we need a roll of film. Since today we're looking at developing black and white film, I'll be using the trusty Ilford HP5. But you can use any film stock you like, as long as it's a black and white film. Well, and basically that's all you really need to get started. So, to load your film into the camera you need to open the bag. With the rangefinder cameras like the Leicas or similar cameras, you usually load the film from the bottom. But if you're not sure how to load it, there are plenty of good videos about it online. Next you put the roll in, thread the film onto the spool and advance it 2 to 3 times. Then close the camera and you're good to go. All you need to do now is grab your camera, go out and have some fun. So let's go! Now that we have our exposed film, we need to rewind it back into the film can to get it out. Each camera is a little bit different, so if you have a new camera it's uh, probably the best to test out all the functions first without the film inside to get a feeling for it. Usually a lot of these SLRs have a little button at the bottom to unlock the advancing lever. But with this Zenit here there is this little knob beneath the shutter button that you have to turn to unlock the film. Now you just have to rewind it until you feel no resistance anymore and you're good to get your film out. So now that we have our film, we can jump right into development. To mix the developer, like I said earlier, mostly all you need are household items you maybe already have at home or you can easily buy. First, you guessed it, is coffee. For caffeinol you need regular instant coffee, not the decaf version. And the cheaper the better, since cheap coffees often have more acidity, which is crucial for the development. Then, next thing on our list is washing soda. You should be able to pick this up at your local drugstore. Also needed is vitamin C as a powder, to easily dissolve. Some other things you might need for the developing process are a scale, a developing tank, a thermometer, a fixer, the fixer is needed after development to remove all the excess silver particles from the film so that it doesn't react to the light anymore. And last but not least, of course, your exposed roll of film. So you now have your very own mini lab at home. First thing to do is to get your film into the developing tank without exposing it to any light. 
To get the film out of the film can, you can pop the lid off with a bottle opener. Then you can get the film out, cut off the narrower part at the start of the film, get your film onto the spool, cut off the end, and put it all light tight into your developing tank. You might practice these steps with an already exposed film, so it'll be easier to do it in complete darkness. Now we have to mix our developer. I'm using a receiver I found online. These measurements are for 600 milliliters of water. The water should be around 20 degrees Celsius. For this amount of water we are need 24 grams of coffee, 32 grams of washing soda, 10 grams of vitamin C. First you'll mix the washing soda with the vitamin C and stir it well so that everything dissolves. Then add the coffee and stir well again and let it sit a couple of minutes. In the meantime we can prepare the fixer. I'll stick to the 1 to 4 ratio. So we will need one part of fixer and four parts of water which we will mix in a bottle. Now that we have everything prepared we can start with our development. I've set my timer for 16 minutes, but that's just a reference point. After some experimentation you might find for yourself that you need less time or more. Pour in your caffeinol into the developing tank, start the timer and agitate continuously for the first minute. Then every minute agitate 3 times. After 16 minutes pour away the developer. Since we are using harmless ingredients you can flush it down the toilet. To get all the developer out you have to clean your tank with water. Do this a couple of times until only clear water comes out. With a clean tank you can now pour in your fixer and stick to the times provided by the manufacturer. You can pour the fixer back into the bottle and reuse it. Just keep it well closed and in a dark place. All that's left to do now is to give your film a final wash with water and you are good to get the film out and hang it out to dry. Congratulations! You have now developed your very own black and white film. You probably also want to show it to the world what you've created, so you need to digitalize your negatives. You could give your negatives to a lab to scan them for you, but since we're doing it all at home, we could as well scan them ourselves. I do it simply by photographing them with my digital camera and the macro lens. All you need for this is some sort of an even light source. The easiest solution would be a phone with a white image at maximum brightness. Then you need a way to hold your negatives in place. Luckily, the width of a negative fits exactly between two Lego bricks. And with this method you can really customize your negative holder how you really like it. You can even place it so that you have the whole border visible for that nice film effect. Now just take a photo of every negative and you're almost done. All that's left to do now is to reverse the colors. I do it simply with the tone curve in Lightroom. Maybe do some slight tweaking here and there and that's it. Your pictures, all by yourself, from first loading the film into the camera to seeing them on the big screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can leave a like. And if you have something to add or want to share your experience with developing at home, just leave a comment. If you'd like to see more from me, you might want to consider subscribing. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!